This is the Race 10 Wild Ranger X. It's a remote controlled car that is not working. So let's test it. Okay, so it seems that we can only control it when the antennas are in direct contact or very close together. Which indicates that there's some kind of antenna amplifier here that is not working as it should. So there could also be something wrong with the receiver in the car that makes it require a lot stronger signal. So let's start by opening up the remote control. I'm glad to see they've only used through-hole components. That gives us a greater chance to figure out what is going on without the schematic. Now I'm going to feed this from a power supply rather than batteries, because it's easier and I can monitor the current. So now we'll monitor the current as I'm turning up the voltage to 3 volts. No current draw yet. Let's see what happens if we toggle some switch. Yep, we're definitely drawing current there. Let's switch it to milliamps. Let's do it again. Okay, so we're drawing about 20 milliamps. Now I noticed that the power indicator LED does not light up. So let's start by checking if the LED is broken. If it's not, it could be that the power is not going where it's supposed to. Let's check the resistance. Hmm, it seems to be a dead short. So the LED seems to be shorted. Let's take a look on the other side and see if we can figure out how it's connected. So I suppose we have the logic chip under this epoxy blob. Here we have the LED with some manually soldered wire. Which appears to be a bit loose. That's a bit interesting. So maybe this little manually soldered wire got detached because of some mechanical stress or something and it ended up shorting the lead okay let's test it without the wire first now it turns on and it seems like the car is moving too Now I'm struggling a bit to find the reason for that piece of wire to be there. It seems that it went from this solder joint to this leg. So one theory here is that they soldered this diode and then they applied the hot glue and then during testing they found that this leg was not connected to this node. So they fixed that by attaching a small wire from this joint to this leg. And what happened now when it broke was that the wire detached from this leg and ended up on the other leg shorting out the diode. Anyway, the LED works now, so in that case it was probably just a misconnection or something, so I'm not going to put back the wire. So I guess that what happened was that this diode was shorted, which shorted this node to ground, which made this node shorted to ground through this 100 ohm resistor. And I measured the voltage here, it was 2.1 volts. So let's see what happens when the LED is shorted. Now the circuit is transmitting, as we can see with the LED. And I connected the multimeter to the node from the logic chip that supplies the LED through the 100 ohm resistor. 
So now I have 2.1 volts. I'm guessing that is some kind of internal operating voltage of the logic chip. So let's see what happens with that voltage when we short the diode. It's going down to 0.4 volts. So I'm guessing that there's too much current flowing through this resistor now that the diode is shorted. So the internal operating voltage of 2.1 volt can't be maintained. Okay, let's put it back together and test it.